Hello, I'm Neil. Welcome to our classroom. Do you want to know more about the history of immunology? Because if you do, with me are Micah and Leslie, and we have prepared a video presentation on the topic. So, if your answer was yes, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. What is immunology? Immunology is the branch of biomedical science that deals with the response of an organism to antigenic challenge and its recognition of what is self and what is not. In this video, we will be focusing about the history of immunology. In the history of immunology, there are three periods. First, experiential immunology period, which spanned during the 17th century and the middle of 19th century. During this period, conclusions were based on experiences and observations in the environment. It is followed by experimental immunology period, which covered the middle of 19th century to the middle of 20th century. In this period, conclusions were based on laboratory works. And lastly, modern immunology period which occurred during the middle of 20th century to the 21st century. It is the period of molecular biology where binding of antigens were elucidated. For the experiential immunology, it began during the ancient times when many serious infections such as smallpox, plague, and cholera caused innumerable people dead. Since these diseases have no known cure, high mortality rates were observed when infected individuals. In 1670, variolation is a method used by Chinese medical practitioners to immunize an individual against smallpox. This method is performed by inhaling smallpox lesions to gain immunity from the illness. This method was then introduced to England by the poet Lady Mary Montagu, best known for her letters from the Ottoman Empire. She first witnessed variolation in Constantinople in 1717, which she mentioned in her famous letter to a friend. Variolation was eventually replaced by vaccination when Edward Jenner discovered that cowpox vaccination protected against smallpox in 1796. He started his experiments after observing that milkmaids who had gotten cowpox did not show any symptoms of smallpox after variolation. So, he collected cowpox lesions which contains vaccinia virus and injected it to humans where cross-reaction as well as immunity was observed. To define the terms, vaccine is a preparation of microbial antigen often combined with adjuvants that is administered to individuals to induce protective immunity against microbial infections. Vaccination is a general term for immunization against infectious diseases originally derived from immunization against smallpox which uses vaccinia virus. It came from the word vaca, meaning cow. Experimental immunology period from the middle of 19th century until the middle of 20th century. In the middle of 19th century, two scientists advocated the active immunity. Active immunity is the form of adaptive immunity that is induced by exposure to a foreign antigen and in which the immunized individual plays an active role in responding to the antigen. Robert Koch isolated and cultured bacteria successfully. He proposed Koch's postulates to assess whether a microorganism causes a disease. First, the organism must always be present in every case of the disease. Second, the organism must be isolated from a host containing the disease and grown in pure culture. Third, samples of the organism taken from pure culture must cause the same disease when inoculated into a healthy, susceptible animal in the lab. Fourth, the organism must be isolated from the inoculated animal and must be identified as the same original organism first isolated from the original diseased host. Louis Pasteur discovered that infectious diseases were caused by pathogens. In 1880, he discovered anti-cholera live attenuated vaccine against a disease called chicken cholera. After accidentally exposing chickens to the attenuated form of a culture, he demonstrated that they became resistant to the actual virus. He conducted the first documented experiment that proved concept of artificial active immunity. In the late 80s of 19th century, two scientists advocated positive immunity. Positive immunity is the form of immunity to an antigen that is established in one individual by transfer of antibody or lymphocytes from another individual who is immune to that antigen. Ruin Yersin discovered that the was caused by exotoxin produced by Corinebacterium 
diphtheriae. They discovered diphtheriae antitoxins in bactericidines. It was also in the late 80s of 19th century when serology, a study of serum, began. Other scientists whose supportive positive immunity are Von Bering and Kitasatu in 1890. In their study, diphtheria antitoxin was applied in treatment of diphtheria. They also supported the concept of artificial positive immunity. In the early of 20th century, Karl Steiner conducted a study on antigenic determinant. He also discovered ABO blood groups. In 1938, Tesselius and Cabot discovered antibody in gamma globulin. In the 50s of 20th century, Porter and Edelman elucidated molecular structure of antibodies. Two scientists advocated study on immune tolerance. In 1945, Owen found natural immune tolerance, and in 1953, Medawar set up animal model of acquired immune tolerance in newborn period. He used a model called cattle of dizygotic twin, where he observed that in first batch of pregnancy, dizygotic twin will have immune tolerance, but in the succeeding batches of pregnancy, adverse reactions were observed. The study on immune tolerance was useful in explaining chimeras. Chimera is a single organism composed of genetically two distinct cells. There are scientists who contributed to the hypothesis for antibody formation. In 1930, Prinell and Horowitz formulated templates postulate. In 1940, Linus Pauling formulated variable folding postulate. In 1955, Niels Jern formulated natural selection postulate. And in 1959, Frank McFarlane Burnett formulated clonal selection theory. Clonal selection theory states that there are various lymphocyte clones in our body. Each of them bears a unique type of antigen receptor which can recognize antigens specifically. The clones of lymphocytes that can recognize self-antigens will be destroyed or learn to tolerance to self-antigens or forbidden clones at the early stage of their development. This is called clone deletion. The clones of lymphocytes that can be interacted with corresponding antigen will be selected and lead to activation and proliferation, produce antibody and specific memory cells. This is called clone selection. And forbidden clones can be revived and cause autoimmunity. In 1883-1884, Ali Machnikov discovered cell-mediated immunity where microorganisms were engulfed and destroyed by phagocytic cells. In 1897, Paul Ehrlich discovered humoral immunity whereby antibody and serum played important roles in protective immunity. In 1903, Wright and Douglas combined the idea of Ehrlich and Machnikov. Both cell-mediated immunity and humoral immunity were very important for protective immunity. Antibody and serum could promote the phagocytosis of phagocytic cells. In 1902, Richey and Fortier discovered anaphylaxis, a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. Perkett and Schick explained hypersensitivity reaction. In 1903, Nicolas Maurice Arthus discovered Arthus phenomenon, where there is excessive antigen and antibodies causing destruction to body organs. In 1907, Donath and Landsteiner discovered that autoantibody cause autoimmune disease. Modern Immunology Period, the middle of 20th to 21st century. They study on immune system. In 1957, Glick, Fabricius, and Shan Guangzhang discovered that the chicken were bursect to mice were not able to produce antibodies. They explained that the bursa is the important organ that will produce B cells among chicken. In 1961, Good and Myler discovered cell-mediated immunity of newborn mice. Thymus were taken away are defective because of T cells. So thymus are important organ that will help the T cell become processed and mature or immunocompetent T cells. They study on monoclonal antibody discovered by Kohler and Melstein in 1975. 
also a study on immune genetics. In 1978, Genetic Control of Antibody Diversity. Discovery of Accurate Mechanism of Immune Response on Gene Level, the MHC or the Major Histocompatible Complex, the T-cell receptor, the B-cell receptor. Also, a study on molecular mechanism of T and B lymphocyte activation and signal transduction. A study on effective mechanism of immune cells. So, Discover of major histocompatible complex was Gene Dowsett. He won Nobel Prize because of his discovery, the study of immunogenetics. Ang MHC are the surface molecules present on the nucleated cells. TCR and BCR, lymphocyte antigen receptor. Until the 1960s, lymphocyte had no known function. The T and B cells are inactive until they encounter antigen. T and B cells express antigen receptors. The B cell antigen receptor is a membrane-bound antibody, surface immunoglobin. The T-cell antigen receptor is not a membrane-bound antibody but it is a distinct molecule, the T-cell antigen receptor. So, each antigen receptor binds to a different antigen. So, each cell has only one antigen specificity and also a study on clinical immunology under organ transplantation, autoimmune disease, tumor immunology, infectious diseases, and a study on applied immunology, the preparation of monoclonal antibody and genetic engineering antibody, preparation of recombinant cytokine, a study on DNA vaccine, a study on treatment with immune cells. So, New techniques of modern immunology and application, separation of immune cells, protein analysis technique, page display technique, preparation of new animal model. That's for our video. This has been Neil, Micah, and Leslie. Goodbye and thank you.